and welcome to Juicy Scoop. It's me, Heather McDonald, back from, honestly, one of the best vacations I've ever had in my life because I didn't have to perform. I didn't have to do podcasts. I didn't have my children with me. We weren't in a condo. I didn't have to go to Costco and buy the food. Um, it was all-inclusive. It's called Le Blanc in Cabo, and it's adult-only, all-inclusive. And... New Jersey went there last year, and um, they actually showed a quick clip of it of on Real Housewives in Jersey this past episode where they were in Jamaica at another one of the resorts. It's called it's it's all part of the same company. This Moon Palace Resort is what I've been to in Cancun. There's one in Jamaica, and then this one is the adult only in in Cabo. And the reason I love Cabo is because the weather was perfect. It was 80 degrees. It was breezy. It was sunny every day. And I got not one bug bite. So it was amazing. And it was, it was except for there were these four sisters that were 70. And they were celebrating one of the sisters' birthdays. And they're from Wisconsin. And they got a little too wasted in the infinity pool. But you know what? I hope I'm ripping it with my sister at 70. So it was okay. Um, all the food was great. I looked cute. Thank you for everyone that followed me on Instagram and liked my photos. I had a great time. I highly recommend you check it out. I stayed four nights. If you're from LA, you know Cabo is only like a two-hour flight. I did carry-on. I have global entry. Don't mean to brag. The whole experience from beginning to end was just like so freaking easy. We never left the resort. I don't need to go in a van and see a bunch of three-legged dogs and get depressed. I'm sorry, I don't. I like to just go and relax by the pool and I don't buy one souvenir and I just chill out and drink and look cute and eat ceviche and the best food ever. So that's a vacation for me. Let's get into what I don't think was a great vacation. So the girls, Real House says New Jersey, okay? Let me go over to that. I'm gonna skip over to New Jersey real quick. Okay, okay so let me do, okay, so New Jersey, speaking of New Jersey, okay, okay, speaking of New Jersey, the girls are at a beautiful resort, one of the same sister resorts that I went to, in Jamaica. However, because they're filming for the housewives, they have to do a bunch of shit and leave the gorgeous resort, which is what I'm, I'm not about leaving the resort anymore, but I understand it, you've never been to these places, you want to experience it. So... Jennifer and Margaret and Jackie went and had to take um, horses that went in the water. I don't know what the point is riding a horse in the water, but they go really high up to your waist. But as they were getting into the ocean, they're all shitting. All the horses are shitting. And then poor Jennifer lost her balance and <laughs> fell in the ocean with the giant horse shit. And and I think we've seen them we've seen some other housewives do this before. Go to Jamaica and go on these horses. Here's the thing, producers of housewives. I, I told you before, I don't like regurgitated storylines that then cross over to other shows. For example, last week, Atlanta, they gave back a baby gift thing. It had bad energy, stealing Lisa Renna's bit. Okay, where she returned, well, no, when the bunny was returned, when Kim Richards returned the bunny to Lisa. We saw that on Atlanta. Okay, I also don't like to see the same activities done, okay, on the housewives. So if we've already seen some housewives go on horses in the water, I don't need to see it again. And poor Jennifer, hopefully she didn't get sick, okay? She's falling into the water there. Meanwhile, while they're all in Jamaica, all the husbands go over to Jennifer's house and they have a poker party. And they talk about how often they jack off, if they watch porn, how often they do it. Margaret's husband is 63. He says he can do it five times a day. If Margaret is getting banged five times a day, I, I don't, you know what? I don't know how the Marge does it. I don't know how Marge does it. I don't know how she deals with Marge Sr. I don't know. No wonder her, no wonder her house isn't done. I have to have sex with Joe four times a day, five if he has his way. It's a lot. It's a lot. Good thing I don't drink. So uh, Joe uh, Gorga, he has it five times a week, but then jacks off like another five times a day. I, I don't understand how horny these people are. I don't. Okay. Good luck to them. 
Meanwhile, they feature, there's a fight going on between Jackie and Dolores because Dolores says to Jackie, you, you were, she just wasn't raised like us. She's not raised like us. She's not like us. We, our families have an open door policy. We're Italian. Now, you know, some people brought up the fact that Jackie is Jewish. And is this a, you know, a, a old Italian Catholic thing versus a Jewish thing? I don't think it's anything like that as far as like someone being prejudiced towards someone's religion. But I do think all of them are old school Italian with the old school Italian parents. They probably don't go to therapy. They probably don't talk about their problems. And Jackie, if she, you know, was raised, her family is probably much, is Jewish. And Jewish people talk about their feelings, go to therapy. Now you're going to go, no, we don't talk about our feelings. I don't know. But I, my friends that were raised Jewish, definitely more into a therapy, you know, let's talk. It's, it is a different thing. So, but Jackie brought up a very good point. She goes, if I ever said anything about the way you would raise, you would have my head, Dolores. And Dolores is like, look, you're just not my cup of tea. I don't like you very much. Right across from her at the table. Meanwhile, the editors keep showing that she it doesn't eat a lot because she admitted to having a former, um, she had a, you know, eating disorder. So then they just like zoom in on the fact that her plate's empty. Well, so is Jennifer's plate. And they just have some sad plantains here. They haven't even gotten any food yet. So let's not try to act like, you know, someone's not eating. Anyway, I thought it was pretty mean, Dolores, you know, but I guess you don't like her. It's kind of sad. And Dolores is like, I don't care. I don't care. And then Jackie says, you know what? She's She was raised different than I. She didn't care that her husband was cheating on her when she was nine months pregnant. She didn't talk about that. That I guess that's old school Italian way to be. Guess that's different than I was raised. So I thought it was pretty juicy, pretty fun episode. But they also, they went to like a sad beach day that didn't look fun. Um, and then they went to like some restaurant that, again, leaving the resort. And I guess they had to do that for filming purposes. I don't know. But the resort's so gorgeous, I don't know why you'd leave. And then at the end of the night, everyone's like, no, we're calling it a night. Like, I just want to go back in my bed. And now they have to go swim with the dolphins tomorrow, which I'm sure everyone on Twitter and Instagram is going to write about the fact that they are swimming and hanging out with dolphins, okay? And the dolphins, apparently, they don't think are having a good time working in Jamaica, okay? If I was a dolphin, I'd like to bring a housewife around. I'm just saying. I don't know, but... I'm surprised in 2019 that they're going to swim with the dolphins because I bet my prediction after Wednesday, a lot of people are going to do some dolphin emojis and they're not going to like it. Okay. But you can't help that a dolphin always looks like it's smiling. I think it's hard for someone to think that they're not having a good dive. Relax, you guys. I'm joking. Okay. Can you pause for a sec? Okay, so now let me go back to Housewives of Dallas. That was really good. Okay. Okay. So, speaking of animals, they are in Thailand, the Real Housewives of Dallas. Okay? We're doing Real Housewives of Dallas. They're in Thailand. And, I again, you know... If I go to Thailand, I better have like three or four weeks there because these girls are there for like four days. Three of the days they're jet lagged. It's just, it's too much. And they're so exhausted. You know, they finally get over the fact that Deandra made fun of Leanne's infinity dress. And they're going to go see some animals who have been rescued who are at a sanctuary. So it's not a zoo. These are animals. Like one was an elephant that was like a taxi driver. I mean, no, he was a taxi driver. People used him as a taxi. He wasn't, like, in a car, like, driving. Um, but there were animals that were, like, in the circus type of thing, and now they just get to chill and hang out. So Leanne saw them, and she was like, oh, my God, these are the animals that I was raised with in the carny. Like, they had to perform. I had to perform at three. And she just breaks down and cries after she she's like, you know, those elephants, it was like, it was like, you know, just like my life. And then Brandy was like, okay. God, leave it to Leanne to go see an elephant in Thailand and bring it back to her carny childhood. But I have to say, come on, if anybody kind of has a connection to the elephant 
that had to dance around in Thailand, it's it's Leanne, okay? Um, but anyway, they acted like they cared, but I don't think, I only think Cameron and uh, Stephanie really cared. Brandy is so tired, she took a Xanax and was about to fall asleep, but I mean, everyone's exhausted. Now the next day they're gonna go into the streets. And I'm shocked at how they are like, it stinks. I can't stand the smell here. It's so hot. I'm like, you guys, I mean, you're in Thailand. And again, they probably just want to hang out by like a beautiful pool in Thailand and eat some pad thai and get someone to rub their head. But they have to go into all these different places in 102 degrees and act like it's fun. Okay. Meanwhile, Cameron finally faces... Um, has a moment during a foot massage. They found a little air-conditioned spot, and she and Deandra and the new girl, Carrie, sit down. And Cameron goes, okay, so can you guys just admit that it wasn't good intentions when you wore the infinity dress? And by pointing out all the flaws, Carrie, that that wasn't really nice to do in front of everybody? I mean, for example, Carrie... You have a jewelry line. What if I laid out all your jewelry in front of everybody, and she's like winking, including the cameras, and said, oh, these pearls don't look good. This wasn't right. The snatch, uh, the, the, um, the way it connects doesn't work right. Would that possibly have hurt your feelings, Carrie? Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, maybe because, you know, I'm trying to have a, a jewelry line. And I guess, yeah, I would rather, I would have appreciate the criticism, but I would have said, yes, you're right. Okay, thank you for the criticism, but maybe we do it in private. So you're right. So I'm sorry that it went on too long with Leanne, but you know what? She can dish it out, but she can't take it. But Leanne did say that her pearls look like anal beads. And she did say that on camera. So that's really where this all comes down to. Okay. Now they go out to go eat. They go to some place that's called Condoms and Cabbage. And it's a place that takes all these condoms and just makes art out of it. Which I thought was amazing because I'd made my own condom earrings um, that Cameron once wore. Cameron wore these, these, they weren't, they looked like condoms. So what I did was I put little pink condoms, hooked them on some earrings with like a little, with a little stone. And it looked just like her earrings. And, um... So nobody brought up those earrings. They must have forgotten. But anyway, they go to this condom place, and they said the food was awful. They said it was the TGI Fridays of Thailand. So the food there sucked. Again, like, the, like I came back from the greatest vacation to watch the housewives have the worst vacation. So now they say, let's go to a sex show. So they go, let's go to Lady Boys. I love drag queens, and I want to go to a Lady Boy show. So they can't follow them in, so they... See them go up to the Ladyboy show, and then they go 15 minutes later, and Cameron, bless her soul, draws it out, and they basically saw a sex show. They said three guys came out, dressed as women, beautiful faces, and then they lifted up their skirts, and they all had penises, and then Cameron describes it. She says one guy um, was sticking in the butt of another while the middle one gave the third a BJ. And it was right in front of them. So they go running out after 15 minutes, but they haven't had enough, okay? They are gonna go to the female ping pong show. And they go in there and Leanne's kind of complaining and she's not really into it, but she's gonna go. And then once again, Cameron describes what it is. And she said, these girls are shooting ping pongs out of their vaginas and that they, you actually have a paddle. You can sit in the audience with a paddle and hit the balls back. Now, this is where it gets interesting. Because in 2019, Leanne brought up a really good point. She's like, I'm not comfortable. We are, we are in the midst of watching, you know, sex workers. Now, they're sex workers. That's different. Someone can choose to be a sex worker. Are they being sex trafficked? Did they, did they be born into this position? What do they not want to do it? Do they want to do it? Anyway, Leanne was not comfortable in participating in it. And I thought 
you know what? Thank you, Real Housewives of Dallas, because I never want to go see this fucking thing. And I'm glad that you did it for me. And now we know that it's not an all all in good fun. And, oh, let's see the culture. It's freaking gross. Cameron had to take a shower after. I, I, I just... It's sad and it's not something I want to see, but I think the fact that the girls did it and shared their story with us showed me that that was, that was a good episode. That was interesting to me. As sad and weird as it was, it was interesting. But Leanne really has it out for Carrie and she really mentions the fact that she's like, oh, you think you're such a big, bad, tough Mexican from Mexico? And then you say that you can handle yourself. We're in a bad area. And I told Carrie, I go, we are not in a good area. And Carrie said, oh, come on in from Mexico. I go to the really bad areas with my daughter and it's always safe, you know, so we can get the fake Gucci stuff. She said that on camera too. So I guess in Mexico, you can get some fake Gucci stuff, which might look like a scary area. But according to Carrie, it's not that scary and it's worth getting a Gucci belt. So now if you see Carrie wearing anything Gucci, is it might be not uh, authenticated like you can from the real real, right? Anyway, she's going to get a lot of shit for the fact that she mentioned that Carrie was Mexican. But if you really watch it, she brings it up too as her own life reference and saying, I can handle myself in Thailand because I grew up in Mexico. But it's clear that Leanne doesn't like anything about Carrie. They do not like each other. So, you know, it's going to get weird. Okay, so now let's get into 90 Day Fiance. Okay, let's get into 90 Day Fiance. Well, here we go. Um, these are the wedding planners. Um, kind of weird. Just look like, like a straight married couple that happen to be married wedding planners. And they're planning Robert and Annie's wedding. Annie is the beautiful model from the Dominican Republic that he met on a yacht. He is 42 and divorced to a woman that he used to be married to named Sarah. Now, what Annie said was, so this is not my first marriage. She's only 23 years old. So he said the first marriage was some type of arranged marriage. Anyway, she's excited for the wedding until the ex-wife Sarah comes over and says, how's the wedding coming along? And he's like, oh, I got a caterer, I got this, because they're spending about $60,000 on a wedding for 45 people. And Sarah, the ex-wife, said, well, I could get ordained and marry you guys. Okay, you know what, Sarah, take down a notch. I think you want to be on this show a little too fucking much. We don't need you to marry, like you're that excited about him marrying this girl. This is, this is a very weird situation here. Even though Annie's so beautiful, you know, she's gorgeous. You're rooting for her. She came from a very poor area. Um, I just find this whole thing strange, like, about it. Okay. Angela is back, everybody. Angela. Angela Michael. Or is it Angie? Angela. It's Angela Michael. You guys, this is exciting news. Angela is getting Botox, and she got a little lip filler. And I think it's going to make a world of difference. I really do. Um, I think it's long overdue. Uh, and, you know, obviously she got it for free. And I think she's going to look great on her wedding day. Okay, so she's calling him. Did you get your visa? Did, what Are you worried about your questions, Michael? Michael, you better be able to answer these questions, right? Now, here's the thing. These people, like, what, how do they, how are they not convinced that they're a real couple? I mean, if anybody's going to get a K-1 visa, it should be Angela and Michael. They've been on three seasons of 90 Day Fiance. If you work in the office that gives out K-1 visas, shouldn't it be required television watching that you all watch 90 Day Fiance? And then kind of know, like, obviously these people are legit. They're on TV. They're making an income from America. I don't know. And you would think he would know the questions by now. I feel like we've been watching them forever. This is her wedding dress. She's getting excited, Angie. That's coming around the corner next week. Okay, there is this girl named Emily, and she was from Portland, and she went to Russia, and she met a hot guy at the gym, and he has two babies and two former ex-wives. 
and she just gave birth to his baby, but I just want you guys to go to my YouTube page. It's youtube.com slash Heather McDonald, but I just wanted to zoom in on her baby's body. It is the fattest, cutest Russian baby you've ever seen in your life. I mean, look at this thing. He is huge and fat. Anyway, um, she tried to tell her boyfriend as they were getting ready to pack. She's like, oh my God, look at these pants. I'm never going to fit in them. By the way, she's totally thin and looks amazing for having a giant fat baby. But he's like, well, that should be your motivation then. I mean, this is the worst. So now they're going to go home to America and he's not going to be able to work. He's only going to be able to work out at the gym and watch this baby. This couple, Blake and Jasmine, are such a mismatch. And they just found out that they cannot shackle up is the way his mom said in his parents home so she's gonna have to stay with the parents and he's gonna go with the brother and it's like wait a minute she has a sister who won the the um green card lottery and also lives in la can't she just live with a sister no she can't because that would not make for a good episode of 90 day fiance she hasn't smiled once and I don't believe that she said that she can't bone Blake because this is the, another really weird relationship. This is Marcel, the beekeeper, and his fiance Anna, who's also a beekeeper. Marcel speaks no English. He's from Turkey. And the three sons do not like him at all. And Anna's just like, I know you guys don't get along and you're not excited about him, but I mean, eventually you're going to leave and it's just going to be me and my bees. So I deserve to be happy. I mean, why does everything have to be so hard for me? And they're just like, um, but like, he's weird. And he's not even telling his family that you have kids. Yeah, well, that's a problem. But I'm going through with this marriage and the bees. So they go and get their tuxes. And it's just really uncomfortable. And then there's this cute guy. His name is Sing, Sing Jay. And he is from South Africa. And his girlfriend is very cute, Tanya. They have a lot of chemistry. They live in a shed outside of her mother's home. But now she's leaving him with her mom. Just like Blake is leaving the other girl with his parents. Because she is going to be an herbalist and has to go to a month-long class to get her certification in Costa Rica. You know, I don't know. Maybe when they were picking the people, they were like, oh, this will be good because then it'll be really awkward that the South African has to hang out with this mom who's a construction worker and he's going to make him do work. But I think that's weird that she's leaving. So, you guys, the holidays are here and you're probably thinking, what can I give the fellow Juicy Scooper in my life? Well, if they live in San Diego, Boston, or D.C., I hope that you will consider getting them tickets to my show. How great is that? Anyway, they're all at heathermcdonald.net. There's VIP options available. Um, and again, that's San Diego. And Boston is in January. And then also February, I will be in D.C. But more dates are coming at heathermcdonald.net. So check that out. And now for a real juicy interview with Bobby Burke from Queer Eye. It's so good and so interesting. Here's some hot topics. Jacob Bush, air one of the heirs to Bush beer. Okay. It's like worth a couple billion, I don't know, $18 billion, big family. Anyway, he is 28. He is dating Rebel Wilson. Okay. That's what Radar Online is reporting. They've been photographed together. They went to um, the Cats musical in, at the Pantages Theater. This is interesting because I've hung out with Jacob a few times when he was dating Adrian Maloof. He was dating Adrian Maloof when he was like 21 and she was 51. And it was some juicy scoop. I mean, a 30 year age difference. I went to their Halloween party and he was a, she was dressed up as a cougar and he was a cub, which I thought was pretty cute. And, um, and he was very nice and very, into meeting me and being my friend. And then Peter and I went out to dinner with the two of them, which I remember very well, and I will get into on Patreon this Friday because it's a little too juicy for the regular show. But if you have not joined Patreon, it's patreon.com slash juicy scoop. Um, anyway, uh, they dated for quite a while, on and off, I think. And 
not together anymore, and now he is dating um, Rebel Wilson, who, you know, I think it's really interesting. I mean, she's beautiful. She's super funny. She's a huge star. I definitely think he, you know, yes, he came from a lot of money, but I think sometimes people like that also really have a lot of fun around the Hollywood life. So I think he probably is really entranced with her and what she brings to the table. And she's 10 years older, 11 years older than he is. And I don't know. I have some I have some juicy thoughts about this whole thing. So you'll have to listen on Patreon. Also in juicy news, Bethany Frankel tweeted a very angry tweet that she was just kicked out of an Uber because her daughter was playing the ukulele and the Uber driver said that she couldn't and insisted that they get out of the car. And Twitter responded. Now, here's the thing. Um, then someone else said, I was once an Uber driver for Bethany's daughter and the ukulele was beautiful. Or something. Oh, shut up. Listen, if, if you, it's not a private driver that you've paid to be your personal driver and you're giving them $100,000 a year to live at your house and drive you around. Guess what? They'll put up with your kid being the ukulele driver, okay? This is an Uber driver who gets paid essentially, you know, by ride, by hour. They, you know, they, they don't make a ton of money. They're, it's a great invention. It's a great occupation. We should all be grateful for it. And if your Uber driver doesn't want you to, you know, play the ukulele, then I think he can say that. He needs to concentrate on the road, and maybe she's just not that good of a ukulele player. So I think you got to respect that. I, I mean... I talk on the phone in, in the Uber, but if an Uber driver said, do you mind not talking on the phone? I would say, no, I don't. I get it. Like, that can be annoying. And let me get off the phone. I think the driver, you're in his car. I think he has a right to say that. So just like if you're going to light up, he'd say, no, I don't smoke in my car. It's my car. No. And my eardrops don't want to hear Bryn's ukulele. So tell me what you think about that.